Okay, what I'm gonna do in this video is do a little how-to on how to assemble, um, say like a SoCal or similar I-beam front end. It sounds maybe a little bit silly, but the first time I did it, I remember of like taking, looking at pictures, zooming in, trying to work out where all the little bits go. Fair bit of trial and error. So hopefully by doing this little video, it'll make it a little bit easier, maybe a little bit less swearing and maybe less tools thrown around. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. I'll sort of explain it as we go through. Um, hopefully someone finds it useful. So the first thing we want to do is put the hairpin itself into the bat wing. Now see the, put the shorter leg on the top. And when you're looking at the bat wing, when you come around to the front, you can see there that the parts here, when you sit them level, that they've got a bit of a twist to them. So obviously if you look at your axle, when it's sitting on the ground, it'll twist up. So make sure that you've got those hip there, the bat wings, so that they sit up and down and that it twists, you can see it just twists here around to the top. Once you've done that, uh, and the other thing to remember is just on those adjusters like that, they are stainless. So, and he sees it's always a good idea. Even if you're just gonna mock it up, Put a little bit on. So what we'll do next is you want your axle like that and you want to get your head, we want to get that into there. They're probably going to fight us a little bit so drop it now, tap it in and guide that. Okay, as you can see, we've got that sitting. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is get your spring, and on one side, you'll have your perch, one shackle. Obviously, you put your, your bolt through there, um, and your bushes, etc. Now, this is what they call the dead perch. Same thing, you'll take out, there's a pin here, take that off, slide the bushes in, push the pin through. Generally speaking, uh, well, the general consensus is that the dead perch will go on the passenger side of the vehicle. So once you've got those two, we're then going to drop them in. Right. So hopefully this goes all right. Sometimes they fight us. Always a good idea, um, depending on what sort of brand it is. These SoCal have an adjustable perch, so that can swivel, nip up one side, otherwise it will tend to fall over. Some of them aren't adjustable, therefore you don't have to do that. Now we'll just go in a little bit closer. So you can see there, there's your perch. Like, well, a life perch on one side, or what we call the dead perch on the other side. Um, normally what would happen is down here, there'll be a shock mount that will come out like this. Some of the SoCal have a one-piece one, these are, at the moment are two. I'll come back to the lower uh, shock mounts because we don't need them on for now. What I actually want to do is just kind of hang this in the chassis and then we'll look at putting on the other pieces. So you can see, you're starting to get the idea what it's going to look like. And the next part we're going to do is see the spring has a little locating pin and it has to line up and go through that hole and then we can drop the U-bolt on. So we'll sort of line that up. Now, I would probably say this part of the process is a little easier with two people. You can see I've just put a couple of blocks of wood just so as I can line that up. What I'm gonna do is hopefully get, them, get it started and then pull it up and line up so the hole comes through the top. It's a little bit hard by myself, but We'll see right. how we go. I've got the U-bolt in there now. You can see the little pin in there better. So now what I'll do is we we obviously already 
put these brackets on. So what's going to happen now, I'm going to swing this up to there and put a bolt. So the next thing we'll look at doing now that we've got that assembled is we'll now look at putting on the spindle and the kingpin kit. So I'll go through the order of how the kingpin goes together and we'll put on this side spindle and a steering arm. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look at that. All right, get the kingpin. You then got this little recessed washer that goes up the top. And you normally have these little felt washers, I guess, that goes like that. That thing gonna drop in there. So here's your spindle. Now, obviously when you go on there, you wanna have it so that that's flat because, get it the wrong way, that'll sit like that. When you come to final assembly, you may find on the top surface here, depending on how tight it is once you've painted it, you may need to use shims that normally come supplied in the packet. But for now, we're just getting this thing together. So I'm just gonna make it a little easier on myself and see how I see. So theoretically, we'll drop into there. See how I said theoretically. boxes here. All right, to get the kingpin down to that point, then you want to get this little bearing that comes in here. But once I get it open, this little bearing here, you can see that slides on the under underside in here. So it'll be a bit tight. And then we get to line it all up and then try and snap it through. And that's that. So what we'll do now is I'll go and get a brake bracket. We'll show you how that goes on. Right, the other thing I should mention in here, you can see this hole here. That's where your kingpin keeper goes. We normally put them in the end. So basically what will happen, take this off. There's in the kingpin, there's a little slot. You slide that through from the back, you put that in, that also acts as your steering stop as well. So that ends up sitting like that and stops you going too far around, but we'll um, fit them later on. This is our uh, caliper mounting bracket. You can see here, left hand. So basically that recess will sit into there nicely and line up as such. Then you've got these little short Allen key ones. They go into there, like so. The next thing that will go on is your steering arm. So these are the drop steering arm. You can see them drop down. Now, this is the Australian right-hand drive version. So of course, what happens is that goes on there as such. You can see that. So into this hole from one side to the other. So the other side only has a, a steering arm with one hole. So the front one, you have your tie rod bar. So there'll be a the tie rod going to here from below, go across the other side. And then here, you'll have another tie rod that comes up from below and goes over to your steering box for your drag link. So for now, I'll just show you how these go on and then uh, basically from there, what'll happen, you've got your, your, your rotor, which is just like, like any other car, you know, you've got your, your bearing inside, just, and that'll slide on, be a nut on the outside, then your caliper will come on from here, bolt through there, and you're done. But for now, I just thought I'd run through the basic setup of the I-beam. Hopefully that helps someone out. 
Okay, here you can see the finished product more or less. Uh, we have not put in the kingpin uh, retainers. You can see the little hole there on the axle. Well, that's something you'd do at the end, but you can see we've got the lower shock mounts now on. Uh, we customer hasn't chosen upper shock mounts yet, so we haven't done those, but you can see here with the rotors all mounted, uh, brake calipers all mounted on. Uh, yeah, of course, um, there's that hole that I was just explaining. As we come around the front, you can now see that we have the tie rod bar um, from left to right, uh, tying them together. And on this side, you can see the dual uh, steering arm, and you can see the drag link going back. Once again, the customer hasn't chosen a steering box. I think he's gonna use a HQ Holden, or you can use Chevy Vega. Um, once he's made that decision, then we can put that in. But there is the finished product.